welcome everyone to another episode of slasher scotty i am your host scotty mccoy and boy do i have a surprise for all of you i have on zoom with me right now amy lynn woodall and she is going to be playing mrs anderson in lonely echoes and from what i understand it is a returning character from the alone saga in general so, so that's exciting how you doing amy lynn I am absolutely awesome. What about you? Awesome. Very busy day today. Like, when don't I have a busy day? But today's a very busy one. <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, I'm so glad to have you on. I know that um, that I was talking to Jason Pitts, and he gave me a couple of people to uh, from the movie to interview to promote the product <laughs> and everything, and you were one of them. And I'm so glad that uh, you accepted, and here we are. So... Yeah. The first question I got for you, how did you get your start into acting? <laughs> a couple of things. Uh, when my grand, you know, when my grandkids come along, it was, I was, you know, cause I'd always wanted to get into acting and everything. Mm -hmm. But when my grandkids come along, it was like, how can I expect them to follow their dreams and never give mm -hmm. up if I never even step foot in, in the direction of taking mine. Right. And then <laughs> the thing that pushed me over the edge was, I was coming home from the gym one night, you know, I'm one of those people, I have a set crowd, I, you know, I travel the way I travel, okay? <laughs> and uh, I got to the downtown Van Buren, and I'm like, wait, where, where are my clothes off? What the heck? I mean, and I was like, okay, what's going on? You know, they're in my way, people need to move. And then I was watching, and I was talking to my husband on the phone, and I got closer and closer, and when I realized what was going on, you know, I'm yelling, oh my God, I gotta go! <laughs> and I just hung up on him, I just hung up on him, you know? <laughs> and I, you know, I managed to go to the side roads and stuff. And I got like, they were filming a movie there, like directly in my route from my gym to my house. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, to be that close to a movie set and not be involved. <laughs> I started hitting casting calls that night. Nice. Nice. That, that's awesome. And, that, and that's why this is like always my first question about how did you get your start into acting to all my guests, because everybody gets to start in a different way and they're always unique stories, you know, so I, I love hearing how people get their start in the industry because some people just get bit by the acting bug and some things, sometimes it's just luck, um, you know, so you know, like I said, it's something I always wanted to do, but being yeah. that close to a movie set yeah. really tapped my yeah. you know yeah so absolutely that was my push my final push awesome so how did you become part of the the alone saga how did you get involved with this uh, project well i uh was scrolling through saw a casting call for a scene filmed in alma and i was like oh man and jason pitts you know they wanted blonde hair and blue eyed female and i was like well does bleach blonde with blue contacts work <laughs> so i sent him a picture of what i looked like at the time and that's how I got to start. Nice, nice. And yeah. were you in Alone and Masquerade? Because I know Lonely Echoes is the third film of the of the series. No, uh, I was in the post credit scene for Alone. Okay. And I was script supervisor and production location manager, all that okay. stuff for Masquerade. Awesome, like awesome. It. it was a couple of different titles. Awesome. So I guess people are wondering if they if they didn't see any of my other interviews with the cast from the Alone Saga, what is Lonely Echoes about? Lonely Echoes is the third one in this series. So I guess can you tell us what Alone is about the entire se the series, and then Lonely Echoes itself? Uh, without giving too much away for Lonely Echoes, <laughs> I it was definitely to me like for all of the scripts is definitely the most psychological one of them all I think and just you know the detective you know looking for her sister my my husband and I trying to find our daughter things get bloody uh, I can't give too much away <laughs> right yeah I get that I get that because you don't obviously uh, there's NDAs and all that <laughs> yeah well there's some stuff happens in it that absolutely I wouldn't even expect them until I read the script and I was like oh that's he oh. dude <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, what about Alone itself? Where did it get a start? What, like, what is the first one in that about? Alone itself, um, just this lady who, my take on it is, she could use herself as, I could basically kind of like an angel of mercy, you know. Okay. But she's, she's totally crazy. Like, I mean, in Marilyn Knapp, oh my God, she's so sweet. But being able to play that character and pull it off so perfectly. But yeah, this one's just crazy. 
wow. you know, and she just like, she thinks she's helping people, mm -hmm. but she's really not. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, oh, you're lonely here. Let, let me, let me kill you and you won't, won't be lonely anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that is intense. And I, I know that, um, you know, that a lot of the cast from Alone are returning for Lonely Echoes as well, which is exciting. Yeah. Yeah, and, absolutely. A uh, couple of characters from Masquerade are going to be on Lonely Echoes, the return. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know uh, there's even a couple of new characters like Dylan Law's uh, character, mm -hmm. uh, Deputy Tony Bates, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be one of yep. the newer characters as well. So it's, it's got stuff from the first two films as well as new additions, which is really exciting. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and, and just like being able to, you know, work with so many talented people again that I've already worked with right. is exciting. And then being able to add, there's several other people were coming to uh, Lonely Echoes, but, but just being able to work with them too. Mm -hmm. And some of them I've worked with on other projects, but just yeah. all of the people that are involved in Lonely Echoes is just, it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. So about your character, Mrs. Anderson, what can you tell us about her? It's a tough one. <laughs> I, I just know, like, coming from a mom aspect, and that's the way I look at Miss Anderson, um, her daughter is her life. There's mm -hmm. nothing other, I mean, without her daughter, her world don't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, to, just to, just because she was running just a little bit late and getting held up in traffic mm -hmm. to pick her daughter up, you know, daughter's gone. And I just, the worst one in the world, you know? Yeah, it really is. And you, I'm sure you can relate to that being a mother yeah. because, you know, and that's probably where you, you might even get a lot of your inspiration from for the acting. Like if this oh. happened to my, to me in real life and I, this happened mm -hmm. to my daughter, then how well, would most I definitely, I have three daughters, so. Ooh. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, absolutely. So regarding being an actor, uh, what do you believe is like one of the most challenging parts of that, of being an actor itself? For for certain to play certain types of characters yep. that people that like I've played a racist twice okay and that was the most that was very gut-wrenching like yeah. I literally was nauseated and got sick afterwards because mm. it was it was just so much I mean even though it wasn't me it was my character it was just it was took such an yeah. emotional toll and for the actual just technicalities of it it's talking with an accent other than hillbilly <laughs> I mean, I have tried so many accents and it just, it, I'm just, I'm not getting it, man. <laughs> it, it is hard to change your accent and it, it is, is possible, but it's hard. I mean, for example, look at The Walking Dead. They all have British accents and they have to speak like they're American. <laughs> can only imagine. Like, I, I've never had to do anything with an accent. I'm not good with accents myself, so I... Well, my accent's so bad that, you know, my husband's retired army. He served 24 years, but one of our duty stations was in Italy. And when I spoke in Italian, the Italians would go, oh, you're from the South part of America, aren't you? <laughs> I still have that draw, no matter what, no matter what language, I can't get rid yeah. of it. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that, that is a tough, tough thing as well. What about like memorizing lines? Is that, does that come naturally to you? I just, I have a, at first it didn't, but I have a few little tricks I do that actually help. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the longest thing I've ever had to memorize word for word was a three and a half minute monologue. Oh, okay. But yeah. there's like certain tips and tricks you can do that make it a lot easier. Yeah. I usually, usually, and I don't know what, if your method is the same, but if I think of some, like when I'm saying whatever my lines are, I think, okay, well, this is something that re not really relates to me, but this is a word I like, or this is a cool word or whatever. And I kind of like, you know, use that like it, it's like when it sounds like a, a really neat word or whatever. Like a like a, you know, if it's long, I had this one dialogue that was really long and it was like gut wrenching. It was like just word vomit on a page, and I, I've had I, few of those. Yeah, and I, I just like I think to myself, like <laughs> one the one set I could not get that down, and I'm thinking, wait, this word is in the sentence I said before, and I have that line memory. I just remember that word down. Then it's, you have to get natural into it because you can't think about uh, it when you're performing it. I mean, the one that uh, tripped me up the most, this is crazy, and it was that three and a half minute monologue. Mm -hmm. I had part of the words, three words, Wells Fargo's coach. Okay. That's in the monologue. Every time those three words screwed me up. It was just those three words. 
Right. Ooh. Because, you know, I was trying to say it without too much of a twang. So I was right. trying to think about, yeah, it's bad. Ooh. Yeah. I, I got, I ended up, I mean, I ended up getting the role because the monologue was awesome, but it took a while to get past Wells Fargo's coach. Oof, yeah. So, so now, any, so now, anytime I have difficulty with anything, I just refer to it as my Wells Fargo's coach. <laughs> but for tips and stuff, you know, to help me memorize my lines and everything, I just like write down all of my lines, every mm-hmm. word, I'll, and I'll do that several times. Then, as I'm saying the words, I write down the first letter of each word, unless I can't can't remember that word, and then I write down the actual word. Okay. Then I finish, and then I do that until it's just first letters. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, it's funny because like a lot of the lines like th- that I would get, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, it's like, oh my god, like why can't I memorize this? But I'm thinking to myself, why can I can I memorize these lines that I have to do? But I can memorize like an entire like three pages of dialogue from like the movie Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's been times like uh, there was one movie we filmed in Louisiana, and I was helping the person I was sharing my scenes with go over mm-hmm. her lines. But we went over them so much, it was just like we'd be in mid-trip, and I'd be, hey, and I'd start rattling off my line, and that was her cue to go into hers. But I was saying my line and three other characters' lines without even looking at the script wow. because we did it so much. Yep, yep. It's, it's always repetition. That's really a, a thing yeah. about memorization is just repetition, reading it over and over again. And there's so many different ways you can do it, like, you know, voice memos on iPhones or, you know, voice recording apps. Mm-hmm. And there's just so many different ways to do it, but just keep going over and over again, repetition. So if anybody's watching this and they are having difficulty with line memorization, just repetition. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, also it helps like whenever I'm lucky enough to have somebody like Zoom like this or whatever, and mm-hmm. we're in the same project, we just keep going over our lines, just yeah. saying them back and forth to have instead of like you, me just record my voice and hear my voice say the other lines and I'm reacting to that. Mm-hmm. I'm reaction, reacting to somebody else. Yep. So that Absolutely. Helps. Absolutely. So obviously we spoke about Jason Pitts. He's the director of the oh, Alarm I love Saga. Him. I yeah, love him. That's awesome. So how is he as a director? the best like there's so many people but he is absolutely on the top of my list of favorite people to work with yeah a lot of people don't realize how hard a director's job is it's a lot more than action and cut (laughs) well it is it's because for one thing he's working with me (laughs) so if they don't say anything about that man's nerves are still but he he's wonderful i mean he's great with the cat the the cast he's patient i mean he knows his stuff and then you know you got the crew and he keeps us all in line and there's more like you said there's more than just action and cut everything that happens in that film is his responsibility yeah Mm -hmm. the responsibilities are delegated to other people you know crew and cast yep but ultimately ultimately it's all him yeah Yep, we're because just, we're, we're just there scooting it along. That's the way I look at right. it. Right. Exactly. Even like with special effects, like they their job is to make it look right, but his job is to mm-hmm. finalize the look of, say, the monster or finalize yep. if that's enough blood or not. You know, if that cut looks real enough, like that's all his oh, yeah. res- responsibility. Like if it doesn't look real enough and the special effects crew does it and he doesn't say anything and it doesn't look good enough, then that's ultimately his responsibility for not getting it to be made the way that his vision is. And that, it, it, and I'm sure he does a great job. I had him on the show. He's a great guy, and I love, I definitely love helping him out and interviewing the cast and crew of this movie. And I, I, I can't wait to see what you guys do with Lonely Echoes. It's going to be great. Um, I know you guys are also in your second Indiegogo uh, crowdfunding campaign, um, which is super exciting because a lot of people don't realize making a movie it's not cheap. <laughs> yeah, you know, and when it comes to indie films, we're responsible. It's our responsibility to get the funding, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's not just the, res- the the funding for filming or even just uh-uh. pre-production, like editing it's- and distributing, like getting it, finding a distributor. Or if you go self-distribution now, there's more money you got to fork out. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, it's also, you know, he's got to make, he wants, he, you know, wants to make sure everybody's fed and everybody's mm-hmm. paid. And yeah. it's raising the money for all of that. Yeah, absolutely. So... For people that would like to donate, where can they do this? How can they find the campaign? What can they uh, What can they do? Um, go to the Indiegogo campaign and donate. I don't have the link or anything with me right okay. now. All right, so. yeah. 
I'm sure if you go on Jason's page or on the Lonely Echoes page. Oh, yeah, page, it was the Lonely Echoes page, Jason's page. And I know I've shared it a few times. I just don't have it right in front of me. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Um, and for anybody that's not able to donate, because we do know times are tough, um, but you, you can share it because sharing is caring and it doesn't cost a thing. So, well, yeah, go ahead. That, that is wonderful. You know, the more it's shared, you yeah. know, even if you can't monetarily donate, just please take your time to share it. Mm -hmm. support the local you know the, a yeah. lot of people in it involved in it are local i mean yeah it's actually one of the things is being filmed in my house yeah that's so, awesome. i mean you know the director's local the script supervisor mm -hmm. mrs anderson's local yeah there's a couple other people that are local and it's just it's arkansas you know yeah <laughs> you gotta support our state but yeah just if you can't yeah. afford to donate just share the link and encourage others to donate so we can get this full yeah. name. absolutely and I mean, a lot of people don't realize, like, it doesn't have to be a big blockbuster Hollywood movie with mm -hmm. a million dollar, you know, five million dollar budget to be a good film. Uh, I can oh, tell no, you, no. I've seen countless, countless, very low budget, you know, even no budget indie films that are absolutely brilliant. And one of my favorite top, you know, one of my favorite films. And Jason is very passionate about this. He has a very talented cast and crew mm -hmm. and uh, alone and, um, you know, a masquerade. They're all, they're great films. And uh, I'm sure lonely echoes is going to be just as good. Um, so <laughs> lonely echoes is an, oh, it's a lot more intense. Yeah. Uh, that's what, uh, from what uh, I was gathering from, you know, past interviews, these past few days, they're saying that this is a very intense mm -hmm. film compared to the other, you know, films. Oh yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's going to be super exciting. So um, the last question I got for you, do you have anything that you would like to promote? Any projects, any social media accounts, IMDb, anything at all to the listening and the viewing audience? Go to my IMDb, IMDb Pro page. Check it out. Um, okay. I, I suck at talking about myself and building myself up, but <laughs> uh, model, yeah. actor, I've got multiple crew positions, you know. I'm your girl, <laughs> but just, um, this is the film that I'm working on now is Lonely Echoes that I'm trying to build up. Um, yeah. and also I just went blank. <laughs> I've got bad. something else I'm doing today too. Sorry. But yeah, just, just support local, you know, support Arkansas, yeah. support Indy. Yeah. And I, you know, people don't realize the amount of work that's put into even like yeah. a short film. It's not yeah. just somebody gets up there in front of the camera, says their lines, and it's done. Yeah. There's so yeah. much work involved in it. And just donate to Lonely Echoes. If you can't do the money, please donate your time and share. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing project. And yeah. Jason Pitts is my man. He's I call him coach. <laughs> he's my coach. Because anytime anytime he's got anything going Absolutely. on, I'm like, put me in. I'm in coach, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I've got a uh, projects coming that are getting released soon that aren't with Jason Pitts, but I'm here okay. to promote Lonely Echoes. So. Awesome. And uh, I can't tell you how many times that I, I, and I'm sure yourself have spoken about, you know, the same dialogue 20 times, even though it was correct the first 19, mm -hmm. just to get different shots and different angles and different, you know, air, you know, different things all about the shot like it, it really is you know you have to get the same thing and then you just piece it together in editing so a lot and a lot of people don't realize that it's not just the line you get it right once and it's done <laughs> oh exactly there's like the last project i did um we i said the line when you know did the over the shoulder mm -hmm. view you know from each as, uh, yeah. aspect and then he wanted me to just and it was only one word <laughs> <laughs> And I had to keep saying it until the tone was right. Oof. I lost count on how many times I said that one word. Oof, yeah. I wasn't yeah. even on camera. He just wanted me saying it over and over until right. it was right, you know, until to make yeah. sure it was like the right tone and emotion that, it, mm -hmm. that I said it in. So Absolutely. I completely I count, agree. Dude. Yeah. And it was, imagine doing it with food, like having to do food scenes over and over again. <laughs> I've luckily never had to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I interviewed once uh, Bonnie Hellman from Friday the 13th Part 4, and she's the lady, that, the hitchhiker with the banana that got the knife to the neck and ate the, well, eating the banana. She said she had, to go she, through, was... she had to go through three stacks of bananas. She said it took her about 10 years to actually eat another banana. <laughs> oh, God, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, I've died like, like some of the movies. Like, I've had to redo my death scenes over yeah. and over because <laughs> the director was like, God! And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then he's like, you're not supposed to enjoy it. <laughs> and so like, us actors like, love death scenes <laughs> yes i mean i've had so many
many death scenes and some of them were just basic you know get shot yeah. in the back then there's others where i died you know death by pencil and nice yeah i've been beheaded twice nice nice but yeah the one in particular was like you know there's a fight scene between me and the killer and yeah, i was having such a good time and i was trying to be scared and even though i was like because i just still looked like i was smiling <laughs> and because of that i had to god i don't know how many times we had to redo it it's like you're not supposed to enjoy this <laughs> awesome like, don't make That's it awesome. so fun <laughs> exactly right well for anybody watching this even if it's a year from now and you want to see what amy lynn is up to check out her imdb page and i'm sure it'll be updated with you know future present and past projects oh, you know definitely. that she has going on so uh, check that out i thank you so much amy lynn for joining me uh today uh i'm so grateful that you were able to make the time to do it thank you scotty yep you have a great rest of your day all right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.